Thank you, good afternoon, and welcome once again to another installation of the Create STEM 10 Plus series, in which we bring to you demonstrations, lessons that are around 10 minutes, so it doesn't take up too much of your day, in which we share with you some fascinating, fun, uh, and exciting science. So today, we're gonna be talking about this stuff here. Some of you guys' favorite stuff, right? Slime. Now, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how to make slime in a couple of different ways, but we're gonna make sure that you walk away knowing why is it that slime is able to work the way it does and what makes it so fun and develop these properties that are so great to play with, right? Now, if your kids are anything like my kids, they love this stuff, but I gotta tell you, it's a real pain in the neck because if this stuff is not made in such a way, it gets everywhere and it creates havoc and wreaks havoc and chaos all in your home. So today we're gonna to teach you a little bit about parent-friendly slime, as I like to call it, because this one here is easier to take off off of, uh, off of different surfaces. Uh, it's not such a pain in the neck to clean up, uh, and it's definitely very easy to make. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first and foremost, I do wanna share with you the materials that we'd be using, as is like in all the things that we like to do with Create STEM Success Initiative. Uh, we like to use uh, items that are household, that are around us, uh, you know, that, that are cost effective. So again, uh, staying in line with that, uh, we do have a couple of things that we're gonna use for this project today. And the first one is borax. Now you might've heard of this before, but you might not have known what it was, like I didn't. Uh, and so borax is actually a laundry detergent booster. It can be found at any general store, uh, Food for Less, Albertsons, Ralph's, uh, usually around less than $5 a box. Uh, and this really has a lot of different usages. Uh, you can use it for laundry, to clean, uh, bathrooms and kitchens. So for five bucks, you're not only getting something that you're going to be able to create slime with, but you're also going to get something that's going to help clean up the house, especially in times like these. Uh, the other item you probably are very well and familiar with, and that's going to be glue. Now, you don't need to go purchase a whole gallon of glue. Glue can be a little expensive sometimes, uh, but this is the bottle that we have. Uh, but it just, just as well, a small bottle uh, is just as useful. Uh, I will show you ways to maximize that. So we've come up with a recipe uh, that is very easy to follow and that definitely helps to maximize uh, your materials. So the first thing uh, that we would do with this is uh, we would take some of our glue and we've actually brought it down to a recipe that's pretty friendly. And what we've done is we take uh, a one-to-one -one ratio of glue and water. So really what we've done is water down uh, some of this glue uh, and we mix it together, mix it up thoroughly to where it's nice and milky, no lumps in it. And so classically how we do on TV, right? You see how they're starting to cook something and then you see the end product. So we're not moving far, far away from that. So here's the end product here of the watered down glue. Now the other thing that you need is also a solution, meaning where the powder and the water are mixed together of borax. And so we've already also pre-done this here for you. Uh, the ratio that we've gone with is actually two cups of water to about three spoons of borax. And so we, we mix it up really nicely, uh, try to get a, as, as, a, as clear as a solution as we can where it's uniform. Uh, mixed it up, and if you have a container with a lid, you can put the lid on it and just shake it up. Uh, if you want to uh, add a little bit of hot water at the beginning to mix it up, that's fine too. Uh, the, the one thing to note though is, is uh, as you get more familiar with making this recipe, I want you to take into account that, that really the, the elasticity or the toughness of your slime ultimately is really uh, dependent on how much your borax solution is, the concentration of your borax solution. So if I would add an extra spoon of borax in here or add one less, uh, it would change the consistency of the slime. So, but we've gone ahead and done three spoons to two cups of water, mix that up. And then when it comes down to making the slime, we're gonna make some slime with you right now. So what we've done is I like to use a bowl. I like to have a specific bowl just to use slime because I do not like my children grabbing my Tupperware, every other Tupperware, and then I get this Tupperware and there's slime in there and I get that Tupperware. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize that. And this is an old soup bowl of some sort, you know, those, those instant pho, I think this one was. So anyhow, so we're gonna repurpose it, right? Cause we're all about reusing and reducing and just maximizing whatever we can for the environment. So that's what we've done here. So we have this bowl that'll serve as your space to be able to make this 
Uh, and, and so what we're gonna have now is we're gonna bring these cups. So the other thing that we've done is designated a ratio for the solution of borax to the watered down glue. And so for the purposes of this recipe here, we're gonna go ahead and do what, what, what's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. So we have that part glue. And you know what, I'll keep it in the cup for now. And then I like to personally do a little less than the one part of the borax solution, just because you'll see that you end up with a little bit of extra juice at the end. You'll see what kind of juice, not drinking juice, by the way, uh, but you'll see what I mean in just a minute here. And so now we have our different parts for this, right? And we have our watered down glue and we have our solution of borax. And what's gonna happen next is we are gonna go ahead and choose a color, right? So we have a green one here. So I think this time we can go with a red one. And so what you wanna do is if you wanna add color to this, it is best, it's optimal if you add the color to the watered down glue, one, two, three, four, eh, well, let's go for five. Five drops of food coloring there. And then I mix up the color in the glue so that I can get a deeper color there than I would have if, uh, if I had uh, waited and, and added it afterwards. So if you add it afterward, I mean, it, it'll still absorb some of the color, but it won't be as deep and as, as uh, in this case, as red as I would have liked to, uh, for it to have been. So now that my glue and color are mixed up, as you see there, then I'll go ahead and add this borax solution. And as I add it, I'm gonna start mixing because as soon as I start adding this, it starts to clump up. So let me describe to you a little bit about the science that's going on behind this. So when we have glue, we have these different polymers and polymers are just like long chains of different molecules. And we have these polymers that are, that are in the glue and when we add the water to it, we loosen them up a little, you know, just loosen them up just, just a bit. And so what happens is that all these polymers of glue are just kind of hanging out, just, you know, just relaxing a little bit. And the, in the minute we add the, uh, the, the borax solution, which is actually serving as, as a type of activator, it's going to activate the bonds that are going to bring the slime together in such a way as we get to know it. So your, your uh, slime should be looking like this right about now, not maybe, maybe not the the consistency that you, that you ideally like to have, but something close to that. And so what I like to do after this, and I think this is, I know my kids' favorite part, is actually clumping it up together. As, you, as I mentioned earlier, you have that extra waste or juice here that, that's happening from this borax solution. I'll just go ahead and leave it to the side. And then I'll just start really just making sure that all those bonds are coming together in the slime, right? Making sure that all the straggling pieces like these right here are coming together on the big piece as best as possible. And you're not gonna get all of them, but you're gonna do your best job uh, at trying to, right? Because you wanna have a big piece of slime, I know that. And so we'll just continue to just play with it and play with it and press it as much as you can so you have one piece that is doing exactly what you want it to do. So we're getting fairly close. And folks, as I mentioned earlier, this is my or our version of parent-friendly slime, meaning that at this point, now you can actually touch it and it's not really slimy. It's not making a huge mess. It's not gonna get in somebody's hair and stay there, uh, but it's actually very manageable and easy to play with. So there you have it for today's uh, science workshop, right? Uh, go ahead and grab the, the, all the products that you need. Uh, this, I know the glue you can get at the 99 cent store. Sometimes you have uh, some from those returning back to school sales. Uh, this, again, you could get at any grocery store, so feel free to go grab a box. Uh, again, around five bucks. Uh, and really, these materials will last you quite some time if you use them sparingly. I know sometimes uh, we like to get excited and make a really big piece of slime, uh, but you don't really need to, I think, a small piece of slime is just as fun as a large one. All right, so now we're back with the second part of the slime episode, right, where we're gonna bring you another recipe that you might have heard about 
And this one actually uses shaving cream, contact lens solution or saline solution as it's known, and baking soda. And so for this one, again, these are all materials that you might find at home uh, that you can let, get at a very low cost uh, that you can get at the 99 cent store. Uh, so and the other uh, missing thing here is actually this glue. And again, I got this at the 99 cent store uh, and it seems to be working pretty good. And there's a difference between this glue and the, the previous glue that we used, the Elmer's white glue, in that this one's a little bit more viscous, meaning that it's a, it's a little bit thicker uh, than the other glue that we used for the previous example. So for this one, uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of eyeball it a little bit more, meaning we're not gonna be uh, so much kind of looking at the measurements, and not that you have to follow precise me measurements uh, with the the previous recipe either, you know, because part of the science is actually that that you're kind of just testing what what works, uh, testing what happens when you when you add a little bit too much of this or or not enough of that, and so then that's how you can kind of come up with. Uh, you know, a recipe or a consistency that I think that you're most comfortable with. Uh, so for this one here, we're gonna add just um, a, a bit of glue there, not, not too, too much. Again, we like to try to make sure that our materials last us as long as we can. So as you see there in this cup that we're using here, and again, you can use whatever cups or bowls or you have available at your home. Uh, for this one, we're gonna use about, about yay much. And we're gonna follow that by adding about five drops of this contact solution here. One, two, three, four, five. I probably dropped one extra one in there. Uh, but again, we're, we're eyeballing it a little bit more today. And we're gonna do uh, what they call in science, un chorrito de agua, right? So just, just a drop of water. They don't really call that in science. We call that in my house, a chorrito de agua, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. For this one here, we're not gonna add a food coloring because the glue already comes the, with little sparkles and sprinkles. And, uh, and so we're gonna mix that up as best as we can. And so we get something that kind of looks like that. It's a little thick, all the, the water and, uh, and the saline solution in there. And then we're gonna top that off with a dollop of shaving cream. I don't know if, I, if you can use dollop with shaving cream, but we're gonna go ahead and add some shaving cream. Not too much because as I tried earlier, it gets a little messy. So I mean, if you like messy slime, then go for it. Um, but we're gonna add just about that much. And we're gonna quickly start to try to get a homogeneous mixture here, meaning that it's gonna be uniformly mixed, right? trying to make sure that that color, this, this glue is pretty good because since it, it has that color, then I can, I can see where, where it's all mixed up. Sometimes when you have clear glue with sparkles, uh, it doesn't necessarily let you see when everything's uh, as uniform as you'd like for it to be. So here you go, you start noticing right now that uh, the consistency of it is, is getting a little bit thicker, right? You, you'll start noticing that it's a little harder to kind of stir it. But, uh, but that's what we want, right? And so now the only thing that's missing, right? The only thing that's missing with this one is gonna be just a sprinkle of some baking soda. And really what the baking soda is gonna do for this one here is kind of gonna help just seal everything up. Sealing in the sense that it's gonna just uh, stop it from being as sticky as it, as it currently is. And so we're gonna drop just a bit in there and we're gonna to continue to mix it. And what we should get, the big difference between this uh, slime that we're doing with the shaving cream and the previous slime is that this one's gonna have a fluffier consistency, right? So this one is gonna have a little bit more volume to it um, and it's not gonna be as dense as the previous slime is. So if I did everything correct, then this should work out really nicely. If I didn't do it correct, then it's science and then I would have to do it again. But the good thing is, is that you got exactly what I was trying to shoot for. So if I, if I didn't do this, we're going to find out right now. But if, if this didn't work out right, uh, I'm going to count on you folks to hit us up with some messages and let me know what I did wrong. Because again, science isn't perfection, it's process, right? So make sure uh, if we'll see how it comes out. But if you saw something that I could do better or you know a better way, please drop us a message uh, because it's all about learning from each other, right? 
So here we go, folks. If I had a drum roll, I would do it right about now. Let me see how it looks. It looks pretty sticky, it looks like a cheesy pizza. And, and I don't know. It seems a little stickier than the previous one. And that's absolutely okay, right? Because I didn't, I didn't tell you it was gonna be perfect. But anyways, we wanted to bring to you the, the fact that there's so many different kinds of slime that you can use. You see why I call the other one parent friendly? Um, feel free to figure out what I did wrong. And please let me know because I don't want my kids making this. I want to make some good stuff like this one. Thanks again. Glad you could join us. See you again next week. Um, yeah, help me out.